what's good everybody welcome to life on beagle road today we're going to give you week six of our gourd just garden update Ha, you see what I did there with I, the I gourd yeah. and the gorgeous? Gorgeous, yep. Um, I'm funny. You're a dad. Dad jokes. You got some you got some new balance sneakers to weigh around here? Your, Asics. your your white new balance? Asics. I don't have white new balance, I have white Asics. That's like that's like the new school dad shoe. Dad shoe. You know? And you don't have a, a dad. I'm trying to I'm trying to keep this fit trim uh physique of mine. Yeah, it's not a dad bod, it's a father figure. Ah! Who's got jokes now? <laughs> Mod jokes. Madre. Ma Madre jokes. It's week six of our garden tours, and this week I complain about where Kenny put plants instead of him complaining about where I put plants. What? Yeah. You. Let's start here in my amazingly tall cucumber trellis. I said it would be awesome, and as usual, I did not disappoint. We already have a cucumber plant climbing the whole way over the top of this trellis, and the rest of them are, eh, you know, about halfway up or so, and everything else around them is doing fine. They're not too shaded, so boom, one point for me. All right, all right, I'll get off Kenny's case. Let's check out his potatoes because he has done a fabulous job with the potatoes. These potatoes have exploded. I am so excited for the carb fest that we are going to have this fall and winter. Look at this. All of these potatoes. All the way to here. A little update on the past week in general. We had a ton of rain couple days where it just poured and poured and poured and poured and then yesterday was swelteringly hot so hot so humid but man the explosive growth that we got out of that crazy couple days of weather i just noticed that i have a couple genovese tomato plants back here that are tipping over we haven't gotten the trellises up for them yet that's on the agenda for tomorrow but in the meantime i'm just going to prop them up with some trusty cages robbie has really been doing his best to help me get things in order in here and keep up with it partially because he's realized that we don't give him other chores to do if he's helping in the garden he's a smart kid <laughs> but also i think he really does enjoy it he just replanted the remainder of my tomato plants for me. I think Kenny was trying to just dispose of them, but we weren't having it. It's the garden kitty. Hi, garden kitty. This plant is proof that zucchini really will grow anywhere. I mean, this was just an extra plant I shoved in the nasty clay soil here and uh, have stepped on about eight times. Looks amazing doing great gonna get lots of zucchini we've got a lot of peppers set on our plants let me show you just kidding i can't lift those over my head to show you let's take the camera to the pepper plant that's using your head Marzanos continue to look fabulous and I continue to need to take these three plants out of the middle that are just going to crowd it too much. I really wanted it to work but just not going to happen. It's too many tomato plants in there. But I will plant them somewhere else, Kenny. Don't you throw them out. Here in the bed of greens, every time I harvest lettuce, Kenny puts beans in. Are you guys surprised? I don't think so. The rain really did exactly what needed to be done for the butternut squash. It all of a sudden exploded. My late planting of Swiss chard seems to be doing well. And this climbing lima bean is finally making its way onto this trellis. So Kenny doesn't tell me he put it in for nothing. Oh no, tomato down, tomato down. The tomatillos are looking great. I haven't seen any fruit yet, but tons of buds, so just gonna keep watching them. 
And even more exciting, we have new growth on our Craigslist raspberry bush. So even though we might not get fruit this year, it is going to survive and we will have future raspberries. Oh look, beans, 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 beans. How many bean plants did you add, Kenny? Wait, did you find all my beans that I planted all over the garden? Well, I don't know if I found all of them. I'm just saying, next time, maybe my beans should be more of a priority than your 170 some odd tomatoes. Just, just saying, just saying. But I'm gonna have some beans, folks. <sighs> this guy. I found the one by the cucumbers. I bought that one right there. That's her. I found another one. And I take back what I said about my brassicas stunting the bean growth because these have taken off like crazy. All they needed was a ton of rain and a swelteringly hot day. So, point. The beans will prevail. The beans will prevail. The beans abide, man. Hey, Kenny. Yeah. How do I know if these are the peas that you wait for them to get big and you open the pod or if they're the like snow peas that you pick like that? Uh, well, I think that when you plant them, you're supposed to look at the seed packet and know what you're planting, not, you know, just randomly plant stuff in the ground. They were a big fat pea I planted in the ground. Do you still have the packet? Go look at the packet. I mean, I don't know anything about peas. They're not beans. They're really close to beans. They're not a pepper either. I mean, they are close to beans, except they're peas. I don't think you planted snow peas. I think they're all like pea peas. Pea peas. Pea pea. <laughs> you said pea pea. Help a girl out and let me know when I'm supposed to harvest these. Please. You don't know what they are. They don't know what they are. I am sure someone watching this knows. Okay? It's where we get, like, 87% of our good information, our viewers. Robbie and I worked on this bed of corn together, weeded it, and then mulched it. Corn takes a lot of nutrients and fertilizer, and we've definitely made the mistake in the past of not giving them enough fertilizer, and the corn was really like, bleh, bland big letdown. So trying to avoid that this year. We were chatting with Michael and Elizabeth from Pine Haven Homestead about what we just like to grow for fun. Like what brings us joy to plant and see it grow. And Kenny of course said tomatoes for Courtney. Listen, just because I planted 144 of them doesn't mean they're the most fun plant. That, because they're delicious. Delicious is different than fun. Oreo cookies are delicious. Those don't grow on plants. All right. This guy. The award for most fun to grow plant is the gourd. Birdhouse gourds, long-handled gourds, other kind of gourds. I might have just ordered three more packets of gourd seeds. Of course you did. <laughs> From Haas Tools because I love gourds, okay? They're super fun to grow. Like, they're all different shapes, and then you can use them for fall decorations, and then when you're done with that, you can feed them to your animals. I mean, that's a lot of joy from one plant. Like, what's not to love? Nothing. Nothing. There's nothing you can't love about gourds. Say it with me, gourds are great. The remainder of my starts, all of my big old vining plants, my pumpkins, my watermelon, I mean, those are a close second to gourds, but the joy doesn't last quite as long, not as many seasons, so that's why they're second place. But they are sprouting up really nicely. Trails my meters. <laughs> Ruin it. Oops. These clamps that go on the string, they are fantastic because the joint of the clamp closes down on the string and then you just pop them on and you're gold. It took me about six or seven plants to figure out I was doing it wrong, but I'm all good now. That should be our motto. <laughs> yeah. 
took us six or seven plants to figure out we were doing it wrong. In summary, you gotta get a gourd. Go do it. Or convince me of another plant that could possibly bring you more seasons of joy. If you are also obsessed with gourds, make sure to follow us on Instagram at Life on Beagle Road. I will be obsessively posting pictures of my gourds. Thanks for watching. See you soon. What's good, everybody? Welcome to Life on Beagle Road. Today we are going to give you week six of our gourd. Just.